Hello and welcome to Outside Xbox, you're watching Show of the Week. I'm Mike. And I'm Andy. This week we finally finished our live Dungeons & Dragons three-week mini-tour. Your opponent doesn't even know where the Queen is before it strikes. <laughs> then he shall never know where the Queen is, even if it is right under his opponent's nose. What's chess? <laughs> <laughs> Nice work, Mike. That was some excellent role-playing. What's Dungeons & Dragons? You remember, Mike, that thing we were playing at EGX Rest? Oh, yeah, I remember now. Okay, good. Yeah, the thing with the little guys fighting. Uh, and falling off buildings? Oh, you're thinking of gang beasts. Oh, yeah, let's talk about that instead. All right, Gang Beasts. Yes. I feel like it's been coming out forever. Yes, but it's about five years yeah, at least. Yeah, but what, it's out now, is it? Yeah, apparently Why is it so. out now? Why is it taking so long? It's, changed, it's not changed at all. I don't know, I can't, I can't really see where it's changed. Uh, it looks pretty much the same. It's got pretty much the same feature set as when we last played it. Um, but it's still brilliant. It's they, still a good game. They added hats. They did add hats. That was part yeah, of the development really, process. I mean, that's probably at least two or three years worth of development. Little though. costumes. And so it didn't always have all those modes, did it? Because No, they've added a few. They added the Waves one and things like that. But Probably we should explain what Gang Beasts is, first of yes. all, to people who don't know what it is. So how would you summarise Gang Beasts? It's like little Play-Doh men fighting each other. Yes. Uh, and attempting to throw each other off buildings or trucks or mm -hmm. uh, like window washing platform things or yeah. out of elevators. The reason it's so hilarious yes. is because the controls are so bad and rubbish. Yes, that's the idea, yeah. yeah. It's, they've, wor they've worked out a brilliant thing, which is that like if you just say that the intention was that the controls are bad and rubbish, <laughs> then everyone plays it and thinks it's genius. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's it's very difficult to control the characters. They kind of flop around and things. just runs around like um, this, which gives it the sort of um, the air of a kind of drunken car park brawl outside a pub. Yeah. Uh, you can at, press like, the button and just make your character do that. Yeah. Which was one of your strategies during yeah. the live stream. And you can just, just run, run around, around doing that. Yeah. <laughs> Someone help me! <laughs> it's important to note when you're talking about Gang Beasts that watching footage of Gang Beasts, it looks hilarious and mm. brilliant fun. Playing Gang Beasts <laughs> is hugely frustrating. Yes, you're getting very close. No one does anything that you want them to do. And I, I've played a lot of it and I still mm. don't understand the controls properly. I was sort of getting the hang of it towards yeah, you, the end. You were. I, like, I'd sort of worked out that basically what you needed to do was knock someone out and then you have like a tiny window of opportunity to grab them, hoist them up and throw them. And that's your that's your window of opportunity. Because the buttons are like, there's like a headbutt, mm. sort of like a Punching. rubbish kick. Yeah. I didn't, is there even a punch? I, yeah, sure. I think they, on the shoulder buttons, when you hold them down, you grab someone, but I think if you just tap them, they're sort of punches. Okay. But, it's but the, the idea is to sort of stun someone, pick them up and throw yeah, them. Yeah, and throw them That's... out of either the ring or the, off the tower or whatever. Yeah. But it's quite difficult because you've got to drag them along. Um, but yeah, it's, it's, it's woolly and it's kind of designed to be woolly because if it was really precise, it would be, I don't know, a different fighting game. Yeah. Def, Def Jam fight for New York or yeah. something. Yeah, Power Stone. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I, I, I did enjoy playing it. Though I, there were moments where I surprised myself with the controls, like when I, I actually intended to throw your hat off a lighthouse and managed to do it, <laughs> which was as surprising to me as it was to everyone assembled, including the crowd at oh. rest. Do you want your hat back? Do you want your hat back? <laughs> Take it. Oh, you <laughs> you <laughs> so that was fun. Uh, you know what it made me think as well? It's that... I really miss like local multiplayer. There's mm -hmm. not a lot yeah. of like local multiplayer these days. Everything's online, everything's Fortnite. Sounded like an old man. <laughs> or are you gonna write a column for the Daily Mail or something? This Fortnite. But, uh, yeah. Have you but, heard of it? Um, but like local multiplayer, it was really Everyone's fun. playing Apex now, Granddad. Yeah, I know, I know. Um, by the time this video comes out, there'll be another Battle Royale game that yeah. everyone's playing. Everyone's playing Space Punch. I would play Space Punch. Get with it. <laughs> um, but, uh, it, you know, just sitting there on the sofa and like laughing and winding each other up, it's so fun in person. Like, um, I don't know what it is about having that person in close proximity and, and winding them up. <laughs> wait, 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 wait. What are you doing, Andy? It's over, Dinosaur Man. I have the high ground. <laughs>
it's it's still worth recommending because it's, oh, it's just it's really funny, and if you but don't think that you will enjoy playing it. No, but just know that everyone you're playing it with will be as frustrated as you are. So yeah, and it's a sort of misery loves company. There's like a real the gang sweet, sweet story. spot <laughs> yeah, of like frustration, and there's yeah. a tiny eye of the frustration storm where you yeah. can enjoy yourself, and that's oh. where gang beast <laughs> sort of lives. But also when you win around. Even though it's yeah. mostly random, yeah. you'll be celebrating like you've beaten a Dark Souls boss, basically. Like that, that round we had where we were on uh, the train, yeah. and we were all fighting on one carriage, and Ellen was just still <laughs> on the other. And then yeah. the carriage we were on detached and went off, and Ellen won without moving or doing anything. <laughs> oh, she's gone! Oh! <laughs> what? <laughs> Are you serious? <laughs> but yeah, it's, uh, like I say, hugely frustrating, but still, a lot of fun. Probably more fun to watch than play, but some of the modes are quite interesting. Yeah. We're talking about the Waves one. Yeah, exactly, which is a bit more of a kind of, yeah, it was really difficult, the Waves one. We, was, well, we they, were rubbish. I mean, they knew the controls. The, the That's AI true, the AI knows cheating. the controls, yeah. Um, there's a soccer game, like that a was, football mini game. That was kind of fun, kick a fun distraction, ball around, yeah. Which is cool. And then uh, one of the best things about it as well is the levels. So yeah, yeah. you've got ones with like meat grinders and there's one where you're all on a um, like a Ferris wheel. Yes, and you which have I to can't sort of, do at yeah, all. You have to try and figure out if you want to just wait for everyone to accidentally kill themselves. Which appears or... to be the best strategy. But I get, I've get i got, as you might have noticed from the seven years that we've been doing this channel, I've got a very short attention span. Yeah. So I'm not hanging around. So you're jumping off, trying yeah, to like stick try onto... To do something and then falling into the sea immediately. Yeah. So. Uh, they, there's the one in the elevator, you're in two different yes. elevators. That was really good, that was a, like the climactic sort of showdown, wasn't it? Yeah. Of our live streams. There, there we go. Oh. With well, you guys turn your hand on my shoulder, you're like, one day, son, you'll fight in an elevator. I do think if you've got more than one controller, it's a really good one to just fire up when you've got a, a mate or two around. Yeah, late at night. Yeah, exactly, you know, it's one of those. You've been out somewhere, you come back and you want a game. And exactly. Yeah, just stick on some absolutely random chaos. Although you will wake up all of your neighbors with all the screaming and shouting. That it's, is. It's a game that it's impossible to play without shouting. That is true. Alienate all your friends and your neighbors, the gang beasts guarantee. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Bye now. <laughs>Okay, so imagine a bunch of toddlers got drunk. Okay, sounds unwise. Yeah, and then they had a fist fight next to some thrashing machinery. Again, sounds unwise, but go on. That's basically the game. Oh, okay, all right, yeah, I dig it. Sounds fun. Oh, you know what else is fun? What? YouTube comments. Oh, uh, yeah, you're right. Okay, cool, let's, uh, let's leave you some old YouTube comments. Who do you want to drag on YouTube today? I see PlayStation Access is Got a new video up. I, I actually, I meant our own YouTube comments. Uh, we could read them. Oh, oh yeah, me, me too. I also meant that when I said that thing. Oh my God. Egbert here is gonna blow the whole place up and I don't think I can stop him. So if you want these guards to live, you need to get them out of the warehouse. All right. Um, Not so just tie them up, but the evacuate warehouse backs the onto the, the docks, right? Yeah. It'll, they'll wake up when they hit the water, I think. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Execute plan, throw guards into yep, the water. Yep, fine, done. Well, Jane, we've just come off our three-week D&D mini tour that John is calling the Spring Tour. Is that right, John? Official name. Official name. The Spring, spring Tour. The Spring Tour. Yeah. Did you have fun? I did. did you have a nice time? Let me think about it. This... Did you enjoy living all that time as an yes. eldritch warlock? Yeah, it was good. I'm more prudence than Jane these days, and it's brilliant. And it shows. Um, the first one we put up was the Bad Chair Day adventure. Yeah, Remember that's that the one. one. from MCM? Yeah. Where all the chairs happened. I think one of my faves. We should disguise ourselves as chairs. <laughs> <laughs> I have disguise kit. This is the greatest idea I've ever had. Sorry, I'm really drunk. <laughs> cool. So, we've got a few comments okay. on the old Bad Chair Day yeah. adventure. This is from Fakjabuf. Good job with the username. Uh, <laughs> probably an acronym or something yeah, clever. Probably. probably. Uh, Andy, I turn into a chair. Johnny, welp, I can already tell that my prepared notes are going to be useless today. <laughs> Guys, I'm a chair. I think... Should have, should have written different prepared notes. Yeah, Johnny... In case of Andy turning himself into a chair, go I... to... Plan A. I feel like we really lost the thread of that adventure quite quickly. Yeah. But then Johnny, Johnny got us back onto tr on track. But I think the, the 
bit where we got confused because mm. we found like a clue and it had a load of stuff about import and export and we weren't and we really We immediately listening. fixated on those two words. Yeah, we were like, we've got to get to the docks and get on a boat, which and was the exact opposite ourselves. of what we were supposed to do. Yeah, yeah. I thought it was yeah. good of Johnny to let us sort of go with it because a more uh, controlling DM would have been like, no, 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 you're not read it properly. You need to do it. Whereas he just let us, for, for a start, he let me turn into a chair and yeah, then, he did do that. Yeah, and then me and Ellen got on a boat sailing off somewhere yeah, completely unrelated to the yeah. adventure, which was which was nice. But then it must have been very scary. You must have been like a tightrope without a safety net. Yeah, Johnny's like they're leaving the play area. <laughs> <laughs> There's nothing I can prepared. <laughs> no, if this were a video game, we'd be like slamming up against an invisible wall around the harbour, and it would be like Ezio has no memories beyond this place. <laughs> but Johnny, and you know, just let yeah. you go there. It's the thing where the screen just starts going grey, and it's like yeah. leaving the mission area. Yeah. Please yeah, return. Yeah, yeah. Please return to mission yeah. area. <laughs> I distinctly remember. The magic of D and D is that everywhere is the mission area. Yeah. So sorry, Johnny. The only limit is the imagination. Yeah. But yeah, I distinctly remember. The only limit is Johnny's imagination. <laughs> well, that's limitless as we yeah know. absolutely but i distinctly remember thinking like once we'd got off the boat and got back to the port yeah that i was like we've been playing for half an hour and we're literally back where yeah, we started yeah, yeah. Like... just pressed a big undo button yeah uh yeah that was a slightly panicky moment i think the thing about doing D, &D live is that you want it to be a like a fun performance mm -hmm. and so we might have spent longer deliberating and and ascertaining whether we had actually understood yeah. what we were about to do if we were playing it offline and then we'd have edited that kind of boring dithering out of it. Mm. But because you're against the clock, you're like, great, exports, let's get to the harbour, let's export ourselves to another country. Yeah. And um, we just, Johnny we... in character can't be like, no, 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 no. You, you clearly misunderstood the important clues. Yeah, so. we decided the way to do it live is to just, mm. as soon as we decide anything, we just stick to it and go with it, which in this case led to a lot of It's quite amusing, stuff. but it, it's it's, probably led to a few figurative grey hairs for Johnny. <laughs> well, yeah. speaking of Johnny, uh, commenter Musicur okay. says, do you guys ever have a debrief with Johnny where he tells you what was supposed to happen? I mean, we're all we're all too exhausted after a D, &D session to Man. debrief. And also, most of us can, I say most of us, I am pretty confident none of us remember anything that has just happened. Oh no. Following a D&D &D session because yeah. you're so adrenalized yeah. uh, or traumatized <laughs> as the case may be that you immediately repress and or forget everything that's just happened and you're like, whoa. I've had a yeah. Yeah. Did, was that a, was that? Did we do a D and D? I always go. What I happened? always go and ask Johnny. I'm like, was that supposed to happen? Was that like? Well, a... none of it's supposed. Well, I suppose yeah. some of it is well, supposed I was, to happen. I remember yeah. like talking to him about the first one we did. The okay. um, very first. Uh, what was that called? Um, oh, the spicy, the, the spicy rat yeah. caper. Yeah. So there's a bit in that where I got pecked by a chicken that was actually a man in disguise yes, and I, I kicked remember. it across the room. Yes. And I was like, was that? What was supposed to happen there? And Johnny was like, "Oh, I was hoping that you you'd kill the chicken, yeah, because then he would turn back into a human and would just be a dead body, and then for the rest That's of the adventure, Johnny. you would be being chased by the police oh, for the rest of the that'd adventure." That'd be quite fun. And I'm like, "Oh man, I'm glad not that, the murder, but the yeah. being chased by police." I'm would glad be that didn't happen. Exciting. But yeah, I, I think he always has like some things in mind right, right, that right. don't sort of pan out. Like I think we were a bit rushed towards the end of this bad chair day one where. The guy sort of turned up and confessed all his crimes, and then that was it. But yeah. I think, like, in the interest we, of time, yeah. I'm going to confess all my crimes. If we hadn't been dithering around, we could have had a, <laughs> we could have had a, a more, fight with him. Yeah, we could have taken him. Ah, yeah, definitely. But I just, um, yeah, I think it, it it always works out satisfactorily at the end. It just, you know, depends so far. how you get there. The route. Last comment on this. Okay. Um, Voltzern says, yep. a burning prudence interrogating someone sounds absolutely terrifying." I say. Watch out! You'll be able to make a saving <laughs> throw. God. <laughs> I'm fireproof. Good, so. good. It's good, yeah. isn't it? It's really good. Prudence is actually like, you take a half step closer to the bar and you're like, this is going to be great. <laughs> <laughs> have you ever, because you're fire. That was the intention, yeah. Although yeah. a few people have raised the point that just because you're fireproof doesn't mean you're blast proof. Yeah. Because or that you're closed, even an incendiary bomb causes damage by means other than setting stuff on fire. Yeah. Right? There's an explosive effect. So you could set yourself on fire just to be scarier. Oh, yeah, no, that's true. I could just be constantly on fire. Yeah. That would be fun. You need to get you some fireproof clothes, though, otherwise. Yeah. Be, and a weird. source of fuel, I suppose. It you could just... be magical fire or. Yeah. 
just douse myself in a flammable Yeah, just roll around fluid. in some gasoline and then yeah. on fire. <laughs> just constantly on fire. I tell you what, why don't we retroactively assume that I was always on fire? <laughs> Unless it's specifically mentioned Unless that you're not Unless it says I'm fire. not on fire, assume I'm on fire. I think yeah. if you have to intimidate anyone in the future, you should light yourself on fire before you do it. Yeah. yeah. Johnny, I set myself on I fire. Set <laughs> I set Andy and myself on fire. <laughs> I set everything within reach on fire. <laughs> Nice. Yeah. Real egg but move. Well, I really want to um, get that my uh, fireball power because I don't oh, actually yeah. have a. Incredibly, I don't have a fireball spell right now. Well, now that we've done four missions back to back, we Surely should be leveling up soon. It's time to level up, yeah. So, yeah, I can get fireball some more spells. Fireball spells. I really should have gone with the swashbuckler Why? specialization because I'm a pirate. Yeah. But I just thought that my character would be jealous of everyone having magic, which is yeah. why I went arcane. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's character yeah. work. It's all character work. You were. Uh, yeah, you didn't like not being the centre of attention when magic was happening. Yeah, so, basically. Me too, Corazon too, Corazon yeah. do magic. And then Dob's like, I'm a bard. And you're like, Corazon do music. <laughs> yeah. This is all excellent character work. It's all character work. Obviously, I'm When not you like look that. at him like that, it's character <laughs> He's doing work. character work. Yeah. Obviously, I am not like that. It's oh, Corazon mm, did it. Mm, mm. In pop culture, a red shirt is a minor character who can be easily killed off, leaving the stars of the show to star another day. The name actually references the red shirts worn by such characters in the original Star Trek series, and not the colour of a minor character's shirt after they've bled all over it. But the red shirt isn't just cannon fodder in TV and movies. Science fiction games are similarly packed with such characters so hopelessly full of optimism and bravery and bloody entrails that we give them 10 minutes tops before those entrails are decorating the level like beads at a Mardi Gras parade. You ready for some comments on sure this am. feature about seven red shirts who were doomed to die in space at the very beginning of their respective sci-fi games to give it its full title? Salute to those one red out shirts. for those red shirts. You want some comments? Yeah, let's let's have some. Here's one from Mr. The Jeff, who says, "Surely the biggest clue that Jenkins wasn't long for this galaxy was the fact that they called him Jenkins." So is this, this like a reference to Leroy Jenkins? I well, first of all, this is about the Mass Effect character, Mass Effect One character, who no doubt no one will remember because mm. he was alive for all of 30, 40 seconds at the yeah. beginning of the game. Um, I don't. I don't know if it's a reference he's to something Leroy Jenkins. L. Jenkins, isn't he? Oh. Okay, I don't really know what Leroy Jenkins is. I just know that there oh, was man. something in World of Warcraft where a all man right. went, Leroy Jenkins, That's like that. That's all you need to know. Well, sit what back and let me weave okay, you a, weave tale a tale of, of Leroy, Leroy Jenkins. Sure. It was um, it was a sort of World of Warcraft funny meme meme video that may or may not have been real but it appeared to be a video from a, a raid in World of Warcraft okay. where um, uh, a raiding party was about to go into a room to do a to do a, a big fight yeah and Leroy one of their party Leroy had gone it. AFK and so he's you know when you're playing online with people and yeah. they're AFK and they're yeah, just yeah. like not doing anything why am I explaining, Leroy? You're on YouTube. Yeah. Go look and look up Leroy Jenkins. Leroy Jenkins. If you go, you work on YouTube. You could have looked up Leroy Jenkins at any point. Yeah, but there are so many cat videos. Oh, it's a lot better than we usually do. Uh, All right, comes up. Ready, guys. Let's or... do this, Leroy Jenkins. Oh my God, he just ran in. But so, so he like runs in and gets killed and so wipes the, the party, wipes the entire party, okay. gets. Well, that, I mean, everyone gets killed. That's sort of the point. I didn't. It didn't even occur to me that that's what the Mass Effect red shirt name was a reference. I mean, it to. makes sense in the fact that he runs out into some laser cannons. Oh yeah, of course he does. Let's have that clip. Yeah, so that is actually quite Leroy-like yeah. behaviour. Let's run that clip again and I'll go, Leroy Jenkins, under it. It's uncanny. Yeah, see, it works. <laughs> Rip right through his shields, we're out of chance. Uh, you, look, you look thoughtful. Are you ready to ponder a second comment? I am, I, I've just had a myth busted. Okay, mm -hmm. great. SpongeBob Squarehead. <laughs> Good name no, says, good. what about that poor white run guard that got flung by Odoving? Yeah, I mean, we were talking about sci-fi games in this in this video. That so. was the premise. Yes, yes. but and red shirt. I th I feel like a red shirt 
in this context specifically means like a sci-fi character. Yeah, but if we were expanding we it to all games, it. yeah, that's that, a good one. That guy, that poor guy from uh, White Run. Do you remember that one? So you know, in uh, remind me. So in Skyrim, you get the dragon bind shout when, yes. you, when you get like a sort of oh! a pet dragon. Yes, basically. yes, yes. And you bring him into the White Run kind of uh, yeah. house. Yeah, but then like when he lands, yes. there's like a couple of guards who are like. We're ready to help you, yeah, boss. Yeah, yeah. And then he just goes, boom, oh, and just gets, man. just gets absolutely owned. I would compare him to the guy in Jurassic Park that gets owned by a velociraptor right at the beginning of the film. Yeah. Gets basically. completely like nommed into yeah. the raptor cage. You can you can just have a film. nice chat with him beforehand, you know, really learn his name. Really? To, yeah. And then he's just like boom, off into space. Oh no! So, maybe he's okay, maybe he lands somewhere nice and soft. Yeah, maybe he's in got a, a hay bale or something. scroll of Icarian flight on him. Oh yeah. And he's, and he's yeah, fine. he might be okay. Or what would be amazing is if you can like travel a hundred miles and find him just embedded in a, in a rock somewhere. <laughs> just a pair of shoes sticking yeah. out of a mountain. Oh, this is where he landed. Yeah. Yeah. Aww. That's a good one. Maybe we could revisit it as a red shirt of, of, the, of the fantasy genre. Yeah, if we do, he's definitely on that list. Yeah. Ready for a, a final comment yep. to cap off this Let's week's Let's have it. Let's hear YouTube about another comment. red shirt. Andy McPee says, Wesker, congratulations, officer. We're making you stars of the team. began as a simple investigation of some bizarre murders in the suburbs of Raccoon City. Nothing in our training could ever have prepared us for the nightmare that ensued. Oh, the Bravo team. Bravo team. Don't agree to be on any Bravo team. You're like, we're going to be Alpha team yeah. or team we're the best. Yeah. Team one. I team, uh, help me out here. Yeah. So Other acceptable team names. A, Alpha. Yeah. Arlef. Yeah. Akala. Mm. Uh, yeah, there's loads. Yeah. All the different letter A's from the different alphabets. Team unkillable. The world. Yeah. Team, team awesome. <laughs> yeah. Team top team tier yeah. top tier team. Not Bravo team because yeah. you're the backups, you're the spares. I don't know if it's done by Definitely merit or what got. at uh, Stars because like a lot of Bravo teams seem like they they would be capable. Mm. And like in Alpha team, you've got. Like Rebecca Chambers, who's 17 and just come out of college. I think it must be randomly allocated. It was just bad, bad yeah. luck on their part. But I do. Yeah, Is there I, a Charlie team somewhere? I don't think Are so. Are they back at base? Are they? Yeah, maybe. They're just like. Having a break? They're like, go and investigate this zombie mansion. And they're like, no. <laughs> Send Bravo team. Yeah, Charlie team with a. We just got back ones. off lunch. Yeah. yeah. But yeah, so mm. who have you got in Bravo team? There's Forrest, mm. who doesn't wear any sleeves yeah. on his shirt. Yeah. Um, old sleeveless forest. Yeah, the leader is Enrique. I remember oh, old Enrique. Yeah. And then uh, Joseph, of course. But yeah, they all get like just totally owned immediately. Oh, do you remember Richard? No. He's the one who gets bitten by the snake. And oh, he's like, yeah. Oh, Claire. It was there are terrible demons. poisonous. Ouch. Oh, Jill, this house is dangerous. There are terrible demons. Ouch. He's good at acting. Right. But yeah, he's my favourite member oh. of Bravo Team, I've decided. But yeah, if, again, uh, not sci-fi, but if we do extend this out into other areas, I want to talk about every single member of Bravo Team oh. because Maybe we should just make a video them. about Bravo Team. Yeah. Aww. A salute to Bravo the Team. The top seven members of Bravo Team. Yeah. I think they're on seven. Like, yeah. <laughs> but, Richard goes twice. Yeah. yeah. Aww. Aww. God bless you, Bravo Aww. Team. Aww. Salute to salute Bravo to Team. team. Well, on that note, yeah. what do you say? With a heavy heart. We, we get Mike back in here. Let's get Mike back in here. And yeah round this thing out. God bless you, Enrique. That's it for Show of the Week. Thanks for watching. But before you go, why not hit the like button as a way of saying good job, or in Mike's case, happy birthday. Does that mean I'm not getting any cards then? Oh, Mike. Sadly not. Oh. Well, thanks for watching. I'll see you next time. Okay, lunch. Oh, I brought some food. I'm going to heat it up with my flame breath. <sighs> Remind me again, am I a dragon guy? At this point, I'm not even sure. <laughs>